Hi, my name is Ella, and I love to read. Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab, and here's my book talk. First of all, I'd like to start off by saying that I really love this book. It was so good, I'd probably give it like a 4.5, 5 out of 5 stars. Amazing. And I can't wait to read the rest of the series, which I thankfully have in the library. A Gathering of Shadows and A Conjuring of Light. I'm so happy that I have all three of these because now I can marathon the whole series, and I'm sure it's going to be fabulous just based on this first book and the other books by V.E. Shaw that I've read. So let's start off with what this book is about. So A Darker Shade of Magic takes place in a high fantasy world weaving together four different Londons based on four different colors, black, gray, white, and red, that are all anchored to different fantasy worlds with different levels and types of magic. Our main character, Kel, is an Anatari, which means he's like a kind of magician person, he's like the highest level of magician, and he actually is like one of the only people who has the ability to travel through the different worlds of magic. Kel lives in Red London, which is the London where magic is most freely used and accepted. He is part of the royal family, and he uses his powers to travel between different Londons and bring in correspondence between the different leaders of the different worlds. In Grey London lives our second main character, Delilah Bard. She is a thief an aspiring pirate, badass girl, she steals from people on the street, and she just wants more from life and her freedom. Her and Kel's paths intertwine when she steals something from Kel on his way to, to Grey London, and they're both thrown onto a dangerous path of magic and fantasy and fighting, epicness. It's so good. I love it so much. I would highly recommend that you pick this up. They face violence, secrets, obstacles, magical things they don't understand, and lots more. So why did I love this book so much? Well, first of all, the characters were amazing. I love Kel. He's like, he's perfect. He's like, huh. Kel is just such a babe. Delilah's such a badass. I love her so much. I want, like, I want her to be, like, my cool, like, cousin so I can follow her around and do whatever she does because she's literally amazing. And Rye and Holland. Ugh. All the characters in this book were fantastically built and thought out, and I really like that about this book. Another thing I liked was the way the tension was built throughout this book. So we started off very low with a lot of world building, which I really liked. So we got to really delve in deep into the world before everything started falling apart and Kel and Delilah started to have to save the world. The climax didn't really start to rise steeply until like halfway through the book, which I think is a unique element of a fantasy novel these days because usually authors like to start out with a bang and then have their characters kind of have to fall down and then climb themselves back up. But this book started kind of flat and then did that whole thing. The world building was really fabulous because we got to see it through Kel's eyes. So since Kel has been one of the only people who's traveled between all of four of these different Londons, he has really good distinctions and ways of describing them and making them unique. And I really thought the descriptions and the world building were really on point in this book. So overall, I really liked the characters, the plot, the setting, the diversity, the writing style, the uniqueness, and like the overall aesthetic of this book. Like, the chapter pages are so pretty. Like, look at that. It's like London. I love it. So overall, it checks all my boxes, and not just the outside, but also the content inside and the way this story was built. I would recommend this book to you if you want to take a step up from YA because it is written for adults but it does kind of hit that sweet spot in between YA and adult literature. So if you're kind of done with like, oh it's all about the romance, I would highly recommend this book because it is fabulous. Okay, now let's talk spoilery section. So if you haven't read this book, thanks for watching so far and I hope you will pick it up and come watch the next section once you've read it. Kel is such a babe. I love him so much. Just like from the first description of him, I was even like, huh, he deserves all the protection. I know, I'm, he's I'm so good. But like, the thing that I really like about him is that he has like, 
darkness and light in his character mixed together. All the characters do. I really like that about the Ishwad's character, that they all have such, such a good combination of dark and light elements that you can't really tell if they're a hero or a villain. I mean, in this book it was a little clearer, like, there was there was distinct roles, but everyone still had something, something that made that made their character much more deep and much more thought provoking. So, like for Kel, like he's good, he's an Anatari, he does all this magic, and he saves his kingdom. But then he's also there's that storytelling part where he was like, oh, when Rai got kidnapped and he pardoned his captors, I went and I killed them all. And you're just like, wait, what? Like it it adds a whole other level to his character, and I really love that. It happens with all the characters, like Delilah's a thief and she steals and she does all this terrible stuff and breaks the law all the time, but she's also just all about her freedom and she wants her freedom and she just wants to be happy. And then with Prince Rai, he's also like, oh, I'm this extravagant dude, I just spend all this money and do whatever I want and I just want to be good at magic. But then he also, he wants to rule his kingdom and be the best that he can be and that's why he wants to be good at magic and it's just like... Even Rai's parents, the king and queen, like, they're good rulers and you can see that reflected in their kingdom, but they also have, like, this kind of ownership over Kel and magic. And then even with Astrid and Athos, they're like, they do all this terrible stuff and they're mean and brutal and cruel, but they just want to protect their London. Everyone else has cut off their white, white London, but they still want to, they just want to get back and protect their people. Okay, maybe not protect their people completely. That's a bit of a stretch. But they want to be part of the greater London and not constantly feel threatened by Black London. And it's just such complex characters that made me love this book so much. That leads me to my thoughts about White London. It's not their fault that they're all evil and stuff. Like, they didn't ask for this. Red London just cut them off. And as soon as Black London fell, they were just like, Oh, sorry, we can't let you in anyway. Anyways, and y'all are on your own, and I thought that was really rude, like, y'all gotta stick up for each other. What have you been doing? Like, there's a whole kingdom of people who you're just labeling as guilty, leaving them to basically die if their magic slowly deteriorates. I mean, Aspen and Athos may have deserved it, because they're, they're evil, man, but... Everyone else, I don't think they deserve that. I think a really unique element of this book was the way that, like, Kel and Delilah and Holland were the only ones that knew everything that was going on. And that's the reason that we heard the story from their perspective. It was because they're the only people who know everything that's happening in all the specific Londons, because they could they were the only people who could travel in between them. And that was something that was crazy to me. Like, they're all... All the worlds are completely unrelated, except for this one little part where specific magic people can travel between them. Okay, the part where he was like, oh, let me just send Holland off into Black London with Stone and everything will be fine. I was like, what the heck? Holland didn't deserve this. Now you're the only Anatari. What if you get killed? What's gonna happen then? All the Londons are just gonna be, have to be like, live separately and no one's gonna know what's going on all the time. And that was very res uh, irresponsible of Cal, I feel like, because he should have done more to protect Holland and, like, keep the Anatari blood thriving. And I love Holland, like... It wasn't his fault that he was evil. He was being controlled. Like, he didn't deserve this. And then also, now that he's killed Astrid and Athos, who's gonna rule White London? Like, Holland would have been the obvious choice because he was in line for the throne before and now he's, he would he would have been freed from, like, his curse thing because they couldn't control him anymore now that they're dead. So who's gonna rule White London? I have so many questions. Like, I feel like Holland getting sent off to Black London is just gonna be really bad. And badly for Kel because like, yeah, I guess he saved the stone, whatever, save the world. Okay, that ending scene with Astrid and Athos and and Kel and Delilah and like the stone statue garden of White London, that was like so intense. I was like It was crazy, like every time. Like the Athos and Astrid are so brutal. Okay, but Lila is like She's such a badass, like, she does what she wants, she doesn't care, she's like, out here living her life, I was so down for Lila, like, it's such a refreshing new character from everything we see recently, like, the, the knife that she has with the brass knuckles on it, iconic. Everything she does, she dresses in man's clothes, her mask, she's just like such an icon, and I just want to be with her all the time.
But one thing I was confused about with her character was like her past with the tavern owner. He was barren. Was her past with him because she was just like, oh, I have to keep coming back, and I felt really bad for her about that because it obviously pained her, but we also didn't really understand a lot about their relationship, which I think was kind of intentional because it wasn't a road the story could have gone down without making it really sidetracked and complicated, but I also still want to know more. I really love her though because she's all about freedom and owning who you want to be and just being yourself. I think the part that made me laugh the most during this book was the part well, the two, the two parts where Kel and Delilah were just like casually just kissing. It's just like, oh, we might die, so... Oh, the other funniest part was when Delilah first met Kel and she had the stone and she was like, hmm, okay, I'm just gonna create uh, an image of you. And then, oh, okay, you're just gonna start stripping off your clothes. Yeah, it's fine. Everything's fine. And I was just cracking up. Because Delilah's just like so snarky and she just does whatever she wants and it was so funny and Kel was like no 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 I was like oh okay just uh unzip oh 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 <laughs> that's so funny and then they would get separated and find their way back to each other and I was like hmm what's trying to be set up here? Another thing I want to know is like what's the deal with Lila's glass eye? Like that was something that was introduced like at the very end and I feel like it's gonna be a bigger part of the next book because Kel's tutor was like oh Kel doesn't know does he? Do you remember what happened? Blah 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 and Lila was like yeah whatever I'll talk about it later and I want to know like is that gonna be important? What's happening? What are the odds that we have a book with two characters who only have one working eye? I also want to know more about Kel's bond with Rai now that he brought him back to life by bonding them together. Like, that sounds dangerous. Something's gonna happen. Like, we know Kel's gonna get into some more action. He's probably gonna end up doing something that's gonna hurt Rai and I'm worried about that. Like, I don't feel like that was the most responsible decision. Like, I know he, he has such a deep bond with, with Rai and they love each other so much. But was that really, really, like, the best option? Another question I have is, how the heck is Kel going to be traveling between all his worlds now that all his artifacts are gone? What are you going to do? That's another rule of this world. Like, the Antari, they have to have artifacts. So another way that they could cut off all the Londons is just destroying all the artifacts that Kel has. And they kind of did that in this book. But like, how is Kel, if Kel loses all his artifacts again, is he going to be able to travel in between worlds? Will it still be possible? And then why do I have a weird feeling that magic is going to consume Kel? Another thing I was mad about was that Rai's guards died. Like, we saw, like, a, a good, like, four chapters from their perspective, and I got kind of attached to them. And, like, they died. Like, because of the plague thing. And I was like, what? I liked them. We didn't have any major deaths in this book, which was, which was good. Besides Holland. I miss him already. Okay, but the part when I was the most shook was, like, when Cal ended, like, the magic plague of people possessing other people. The line, it was like, no, white London and red London. People just drop dead. Everyone just drop dead. That's such, such a vivid image in my mind. Anyway, so I really enjoyed reading A Dark Shade of Magic and talking about it. And I'm very excited to read the next two books. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and leave a comment if you want. We can chat about A Dark Shade of Magic or you can just yell at me about how I got everything wrong and how I read too fast. Subscribe to this channel if you like to hear me ramble. I hope you have a great time reading. Hopefully you pick up this book. Until I see you next time, bye!